The gear rules on the fixed rack with an angular velocity and angular acceleration shown. Determine the acceleration of point A. Okay, so we need to find the acceleration of point A. We know we can find that relative to any other point on this object. So what we always want to do is find the most, the point that is most enlightened. What is the point that we know most about? Okay. So on this one, what, what's the point that we know most about? No, which one do we know the most about in terms of acceleration? Okay, acceleration is a little bit harder to visualize than velocity, but remember that there's always tangential acceleration and normal acceleration whenever we have general planar motion. So if we look at, like, let's say the instantaneous center, where is the instantaneous center of zero velocity? Directly below O. It'd be right here. This is our IC. And we know that velocity of IC is equal to zero. That's the definition of it. Is acceleration of IC equal to zero? It's, it's not zero. What do we know about O? What do, we, what do we know about the motion of O or the velocity of O? Alpha and omega apply to every point on this body because they are the angular uh, velocity and angular acceleration of the entire body. But those are not velocities and accelerations. They're angular velocities and accelerations. I'm just going to do my givens and finds. Alpha equals 6 radians per second squared. Uh, omega equals 12 radians per second squared. We're supposed to find the acceleration of A. That's not alpha, that's acceleration, the, app, the fixed reference frame acceleration of A. Okay, <laughs> what's the motion of O look like? It's going this way, right? Wouldn't O just go in a straight line? Is there any other point on the body that goes in a straight line? No. Every other point on the body is going to have both translation and acceleration. I mean, it's going to have both <laughs> uh, tangential and normal acceleration. O is not. O has straight, straight line motion. So we like that. That's helpful. It means it has no normal acceleration, right? So what is the acceleration of O? At this instant, it's, it's as if every part is moving about the instantaneous center. So the acceleration of O is really going to be equal to just the tangential component of acceleration, which we know is equal to alpha R. Or in the vector form, AT is equal to alpha crossed with R. And what is that R? It would be the position of O with respect to the IC. That is fairly easy to calculate, right? We can just say alpha is given, so we've got 6 radians per second squared. And the position of O with respect to IC looks like this, right? It's that vector from the bottom to the top, and that would be 0 0.3 meters as the magnitude of it. Multiply those two together, that's 1.8. So we get alpha O is equal to 1.8 meters per second squared. Now we really know a lot about O, right? So now we want to write out our equation of A with respect to O. The acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of O plus alpha crossed with the position of A with respect to O plus omega crossed omega crossed position of A with respect to O. We know all of this. We can just start plugging it in. Okay, so we're going to have acceleration of A is equal to acceleration of O, which is 1.8 meters per second squared. And what would that be as a vector? Which way is O accelerating? To the right. Now, you can do this two ways. I could have either used this actual cross product right here, and it would have given me the mathematical answer, or I can get the magnitude but then I have to look at it. And I say, well, alpha is in the same direction as omega, which means this thing is starting to roll faster and faster and faster, which would mean O would be going that way faster and faster and faster. So I expect it to be in the I direction. My fixed coordinate system is going to be like this, x, y. So I call this I. Plus 6 radians per second squared. Which direction is that in? I've got to get out my right hand, right? It's going against my right hand. So wouldn't it be the negative k? Okay, pay attention to that. You have negative 
six radians per second k. And we need to cross that with the position of A with respect to O. The position of A with respect to O is if you start at O and you walk to A, that's just going to be 0.3 j plus negative 12 k crossed with negative 12 k crossed with uh, 0.3 j. Okay, well we know that that whole thing in 2D is actually just omega, negative omega squared r, which is equal to negative, negative 12 squared times 0.3 j. Okay, so we just do this cross product. Uh, we got our shortcut, which tells us i, j, k. We're doing a k crossed with a j. We get a negative i, so we would have... <laughs> 18 meters per second squared, I. <coughs> we get a negative I, but we already have a negative 6, so it's going to be um, positive 1.8 I. And we're going to add on to that uh, 12 squared times 0.3, whatever that is, 43.2 minus 43.2 J. Uh, that was from right here. I'm taking the shortcut of 2D, right? So I'm just taking omega squared times r as a vector. The r as a vector takes the j along with it. So I just did 12 squared, which is 144 times 0.3, gives us 43.2, and carry the negative sign through. Okay, so that's my acceleration of a. And so I just add it together, and I get um, 3.6i minus 43.2j. If I want the acceleration as a magnitude, it's the square root of 3.6 squared plus 43.2 squared, which is 43.3 uh, meters per second squared.